uh, just what your thoughts are on how that competition went. Um, you know, I go into that race. I, I, uh, I had no idea how the race was going to go because it's windy. It was a little bit hot and sure enough, the race went out. It took a, it took out, it went out in a hot pace. And, uh, I knew that it, this, it couldn't stay like this because it was windy. Um, so I just hung out in the back and, and slowly had to fight my way up to the front, got clipped quite a few times, but, uh, you know, I, the last four laps were exactly as I imagined it, you know, just, just making that hot move and, and staying on it. Yeah. Like you mentioned, having to work your way up throughout the race, um, at the halfway mark, what were your thoughts about how the pace was going, how the race plan you had was being executed and what you wanted to do to finish? I mean, I was pretty far back at 5k, but I'm, you know, I, I know that we just had a long way to go. I was like this, if I'm as tired as I am right now, everybody else is feeling it too. So I just kind of waited for them to come back to me. And, uh, I, I worked off uh, Jenkins for a little bit, but then he started to look a little tired and uh, kind of had to take the race on my own after that. This next question is from Tyler Talkman, the Oregonian. Uh, what's your relationship with Grant like, and how have you seen him grow since you've been training with him? Yeah, Grant's a, I'm, it's a shame that I like him so much because <laughs> I have to race him all the time. But, uh, you know, he, he came into the team and uh, there was a race where he actually was banged up a little bit um, indoors and he came back and he ran like a 742 or 739 uh, after being banged up for a few weeks and I knew that this guy was the real deal so I knew the very first camp that this guy was for real and uh, I mean nothing phases the guy he's just super laid back um, it's it's a shame that I like him so much <laughs> Next question is from Eric Bull, diestat.com. Woody, how meaningful is this for you to achieve your first Olympic team in the state of Oregon, considering your college history at Portland, as well as training with the Bowerman group a great deal within the state? Yeah. It, I mean, Jerry told me before the race, like, holy, holy cow, you know, use different language, but this, this is like home field advantage. It, you know, I could, I saw so many UP guys and girls and my, my dad, my coach, you know, at, it was so loud out there. I even had people texting me saying, this is what I'm going to yell. So, and I could hear it. So it, it, uh, I mean, it means everything. It really does. Uh, this question is from Jonathan Galt. Uh, three weeks ago, Grant dropped you pretty badly over the final 800. What changed since then that allowed you to turn the tables tonight? Uh, I think nerves. A few weeks ago, I wasn't as nervous as I was. And I think, uh, you know, the more nerves you have for race, the more that, that instinct takes over to uh to really want to stay on it and to to kick so i think one of my biggest weaknesses as a runner is like those last three laps i'll fall off um but you know in a big race like this i really work um it takes a lot of energy for me to do it but i, I really work to stay on it and my kick's always there yeah this question's from robert johnson uh lopez dropped out mid-race was that a surprise to you were you guys beating him in practice and another question uh, will you do the 5k if you make the team might you give up your spot for ben true and what do you say to a 35 year old who came up one spot short? Hmm. Well, uh, first of all, to answer Lopez question, uh, I, I wasn't sure that Lopez was in the best place he'd ever been, but he definitely was, uh, fit enough to, to make the team. When I saw him step off, I was, I was pretty, pretty surprised because Lopez is a tough guy. He'll run through anything. So when something, when he steps off, I mean, something happened. Um, but, uh, Regarding Ben True, I mean, no, I, I won't give up my spot for Ben. I mean, I like the guy a lot, but I mean, he's he's not my he's not my teammate. I, I don't know the guy personally, so um, I wish the best for him. It's it's a shame he's had a lot of those finishes, but uh, that's that's the way the sport works. Huh? Next question is from uh, Jonathan Galt. Uh, you waited until about one twenty to go to make your move to the front. Was it hard staying patient and waiting almost nine thousand nine hundred to finally make your move? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm naturally a, a sandbagger. So, uh, no, it was hard to be patient early in the race when I saw, you know, twenty or or something, some odd people in front of me, and I had to keep reminding myself, like, okay, you know, you're just as fit as these guys. They're feeling it too. They'll come back. Um, so yeah, patience was was a big part of of what um, helped me stay in that race today. Yeah. Um, another question from Jonathan Galt. Is your plan to uh, run the 5K later in the meet? And would you run both events in Tokyo? I am going to run the 5K, I think, as far as um, I know. I haven't talked to Jerry yet, but the plan is to run the five. Um, 
And what, I'm sorry, was the second question? Just would you run both events in Tokyo if you qualified for both? Yes, yeah, I would. I, if I qualify for both, I'll run both events. Yep. Okay. Um, if there's anybody else who wants to type a question in the chat, go ahead. We'll wait and see if we get any more questions. Um, if you're also in the middle of typing a question and want to raise your hand to let me know, <coughs> go ahead and do that. Yeah, we got a couple of questions still coming in. Am I, am I supposed to be looking at the camera, by the way? Yeah, the camera's basically good. Sorry. Um, I try to position myself so I'm like looking through you at the gotcha. camera. Like, You're yeah, good. Yeah, You're yeah. Good. Apologies. Um, you mind if I eat? <laughs> yeah, go for it. All right. Yeah, I mean, still waiting on a few people that are still typing questions. So go ahead. What a day, huh? Yeah, what a day. What a day. Doesn't get better than this, does it? No. Yeah. I guess I could ask you about that. It's just Hayward Field and being back here and having this crowd. Yeah, it's, it makes you wonder, if, like, is this, yeah, it's, it's it doesn't get better than this. <laughs> yeah. We've got a few more questions coming in whenever you're ready, but take your time. Yeah. Yeah, can you throw me another? Thank you. I actually need, I think I need, uh, I need some medical care. I'm really banged up. Yeah. Like, real bad. I'm, I'm giving an interview. Ah, thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah, we got a few more and then we'll be done. No, I'm I have all night. <laughs> okay. So this is this is nice. Is this uh am I on television right now? I don't think so. No. Okay. <laughs> Cause I'm yeah, I'm just kind of looking around. All right. Um uh, question from Rich Sands is uh you weren't a superstar in college and your first few years as a pro. What motivated you to keep at it? Well, my first motivated. Yeah, I think the, the common answer to that is they thought that they, you know, they still had more to give to the sport. And um, I think that's, that's the truth, man. Uh, anytime you go through, or you have an, uh, an underwhelming career in something, you always feel like you can give something more to, to that career when you come to the end of it. So I think when it came to uh, college, I felt like I could do more. And uh, as a pro, I had a good opening season, and I knew I still had that. So I, I was still motivated to to succeed. All right. And then another question from Robert Johnson. Uh, this will be, how distracting has the Houlihan news been? And what would you say to somebody who now doubts your performance? Well, I think uh, Shelby is, is innocent. So it's not as distracting as you would think when you know somebody didn't do it. I think it would be more distracting if I was like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe she did, but she didn't. So it, it hasn't really been that distracting. Um, I wrote a post to, to support her and you could ask me now or in 10 years, I, you know, she's innocent. So if anyone doubts my performance or I'm in the wrong, <laughs> you want me to say. Yep. Um, and then last question will just be on your plans between now and Tokyo and uh, what's next for you. Um, my plans. I, uh, I hadn't even had time to think about it. I think I'm going to go back up to park city. Um, obviously I'm going to race the 5k first. Uh, try and make that team and then you know shoot for the stars now yeah and Not then the moon. One, one more quick question from larry <laughs> larry edder from run blog run is just asking at what point did you feel confident in the race um and at what point did you feel, feel good about being able to win four laps to go i think my my confidence was definitely the lowest when I, we were 10 minutes in and i was feeling very sluggish and i was very far in the back and we were clipping each other and uh, i think that's when my the, the doubts really crept in but once I moved up where people started to come back and I started to relax I was like okay this is natural and uh with four laps to go uh I mean this is what I had practiced in my mind over and over I'm like okay four laps to go we're gonna start to wind up and 
I'm going to get into that third or fourth position. I'm just going to relax just like practice. And that's exactly what happened. So uh, I think mentally I was prepared for that kind of race. Um, I just had to get through the really hard part of being kicked around people talking to each other, everything. Um, and just getting in position with, uh, where I could see the light, you know? Yeah. Another question from Larry Etter is how does it feel to crank a 53 second last lap at the end of a 10,000 meter? <laughs> you know, that was, that was not hard at all. <laughs> that's the hardest. That's the easiest part. The last lap of any race is always the easiest because it's just everything you got. And, uh, you know, I wish I could really reinforce that, that <laughs> the last lap is, is, um, it's, it's just getting to the last lap for me. So uh, cranking 53 seconds, 50, cranking 57 or cranking, cranking 51 is, it's just what you have to do to win. But, but getting there in a position to win, I think is the hard part. All right. All right, that is all. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <clears> Thank <throat> you.